National Social Democratic Party Azad and Association Shanarak are trying to reach the same goal through different means in their heated dispute over the right to defend people's interests. These efforts, however, often overshadow the interests themselves. Almaty's public organizations cannot reach a consensus over who will defend people's rights. Zoria Nurmagambetova knows well the problems of people whose houses were set for demolition. Now, as a coordinator of the National Social Democratic Party Azad, she is fighting for people's rights while protecting them from her colleagues. Public organization Shanrak was not able to work with people to the benefit of the authorities, thus the population just did not support it. In response, Shanarak representatives say that the differences lie not in goals but in methods of their achievement. The organization proposed to pay a fine, thereby admitting its responsibility for the squatting and drawing comparisons with traffic violations, when drivers are led to go after paying a penalty. Our entire activity is aimed at making life easier for people. We don't need anything else. We are not planning to hold the revolution as Zauria. Another problematic initiative of Shanarak was to lease a disputed land. Zauria Nurmagambetova disagreed with this initiative. In her view, it ensures shelter for the residents of Alatau district. Meanwhile, the infighting behind the scenes is not important only to the residents of the micro district. Last year we were given the land for three years without the right to sell it. That was our victory. Don't tell me that someone did it for us. We the people achieved this result. While public organizations argue over who deserve the right to defend people's interests, the residents of Shanurak Micro District attempted to obtain state certificates for their land. The presence of several video cameras definitely sped up the process somewhat. Mahsid Baltabayev's family received the documents, but for some reason without the mayor's signature. Another public organization, the Union of Muslims of Kazakhstan, is demanding the resignation of the education minister, Jensi Tuimenbaev. The reason for such harsh measures was the minister's recent visit to Almaty and his reluctance, according to public figures, to listen to criticism. The next report has more. Kazakh non-governmental organizations demanded the dismissal of the education minister Jan Sey Tuiminbayev, whose working schedule became the reason of discontent. Last week, he suddenly changed the date of a meeting with Almaty NGOs holding in four days ahead of schedule and forgetting to inform many organizations about the change. This behavior was viewed by the Union of Muslims of Kazakhstan as incorrect. The organization's head, Murat Tilibekov, said the minister deliberately changed the date to avoid the criticism of his work. We keep receiving complaints about the money pocketing, fraud, corruption and large amounts of money being spent for unknown purposes. It is likely the minister cannot comment on any of that. Thus, he found a way to avoid these topics. The meeting with the leaders of the public organization was held in the Almaty Pedagogical Institute on February 12. The burning issue discussed was the use of Kazakh language in education. The decision to change the date of the meeting was explained by the minister by his tight working schedule. I have met with other fellows as well, and that is why I don't keep any secrets from anyone. The initially planned discussion will still take place as planned, although without the minister participation. The alternative meeting will be organized by the union ar which believes that discussions with Tuminbayev are a waste of time anyway. They wanted to kill two birds with one stone, have a meeting with NGOs and discuss the Kazakh language issue. But there were no NGOs that raised the issue of students' rights, so of course I declined my participation. On February 16, representatives of Kazakh public organization, activists of ruling party Nuratan University's chancellors, student ombudsmen and officials from Almaty mayor office will gather to discuss problems of education in the country, including soft landing, headscarves and corruption. The ministry representatives have declined their participation in the event. Meanwhile, a former colleague of Tuimin Baev, the vice minister for emergency situations, Ablai Sabdalin, took the place of a defendant in Astana. The specialized criminal inter-district court of the capital reviews the charges of bribery in a especially large amount brought against the ex-official. The former vice minister of emergencies, Ablai Sabdalin, is accused of bribing officers of the financial police worth $30,000. Following Sabdalin's initiative, Tlen of the senior inspector of key cases was offered a bribe for cancelling a procedural decision based on the verification of the refusal to initiate criminal proceedings. 
In addition to bribing, the former vice minister is accused of exceeding his authority in conducting state purchases. Last year, the accounts committee found out about the misuse of over $13 million from the minister's budget. The defendant, however, pleads not guilty and his defense is sure that the accusation of bribery is a mistake. If Sabdali never passed anything to anyone and was not caught red-handed, there must be at least some evidence that he was holding this money. The court questioned the key witness, the Emergency Ministry Department Director Jean Dosselias, who passed the bribe to a financial policeman. This interrogation, however, was held behind the closed doors due to the Special Witness Protection Program. The attorney also insisted on examining the money for defendants' fingerprints, and the court satisfied the motion. An unexpected turn in the trial, Citizen Kozlov versus Department of Justice. On February 15, the prosecutors supported the action of the founder of public association Democracy, Jasasin, considering the refusal of state authority in the association's registration, the violation of civil rights. Last year, Kozlov applied 10 times for the registration of the public union, trying different names for it. Every time, though, the Justice Ministry found the names too similar to those of the other organizations because of the word democracy. Outraged, Kozlov filed a suit. The process started on Friday, February 12th, and was expected to be long and tedious. However, the prosecutor's speech on Monday afternoon surprised many. Now everything depends on the court's decision, which will be likely announced on February 16th. I believe Kozlov's suit against the committee that illegally rejected the registration of his party and infringed the rights for freedom of association should be partially satisfied. Another happy ending is observed in the story of the arrested crew of the infamous Illusion 76. Kazakh pilots have finally returned to their homeland from Bangkok, but so far refused to talk to the press. Thai authorities, meanwhile, will decide the fate of the aircraft and weapons it had on board. The crew of the infamous Illusion 76 has finally arrived from Bangkok to Almaty. Nearly 40 tons of ammunition was found on board the airplane. Although expected as superstars, the pilots, who spent 63 days in a Thai prison, never appeared in the main hall of the airport, likely using the staff exit. I do not know anything. The return of the crew is considered to be a great diplomatic victory. On December 11, 2009, the Kazakh Belarusian crew of the Illusion 76 was detained by Thai law enforcement agencies. The plane was heading from North Korea. The pilots have denied the charges of armed smuggling. The ammunition was listed as oil drilling equipment in the overhead. According to UN and the Security Council's resolutions, weapons cannot be exported from North Korea. So these arms will remain in Thailand until they decide what to do with them. Although the pilots carried out a private flight, they usually work for the Kazakh company East Wing, which also closely monitors the investigation. The commissioner of the military cargo is yet to be found, while the ultimate destination is known to be Iraq. The flight plan is also somewhat confusing, as it includes a transit through the Arab Emirates and Ukraine. No one in their right mind would smuggle weapons like this. The flight was deliberately planned to be arrested along the way somewhere. Someone needed the scandal. Now the pilots will fly home from Almaty to Shimken. Meanwhile, the general prosecutor of Kazakhstan has already issued a statement that intends to question the crew and find out more about their mysterious journey. So far, it is known that the plane was registered in Georgia, belongs to a company from the Arab Emirates, which leased it to New Zealand carriers, who in turn passed the aircraft to a company in Hong Kong. February 15th is marked across the entire former USSR as the day of the withdrawal of Soviet troops from Afghanistan. In Kazakhstan, the memorial service included the ceremony of laying flowers at the monument to the soldiers' internationalists. On February 15th, Kazakhstan celebrated the 21st anniversary of the withdrawal of Soviet troops from Afghanistan. Several key activities were held in the city of Semei. The main event took place near the monument dedicated to international soldiers. The ceremony was attended by representatives of the city administration, leaders of the regional command Vostok and students of local universities. Out of 500 Semei residents who participated in the war, 48 never returned home, while the survivors do not consider the date a holiday. This is a memorial day. In some way it is a holiday, but we also mourn those we lost in that war. The congratulatory speeches of the officials were followed with a ceremony of wreath laying and a concert in the local culture palace. Afghan war veterans also visited city schools where they participated in patriotism lessons. 
These were all the latest updates from Kazakhstan. Thank you for being with us and goodbye.